when we arrived at the gate, we were made to wait for over an hour, but for almost one and a half hours outside, and they were still consulting inside. They took a decision to go in, and uh, as we were about to enter, I was denied entry into the prison uh, against my constitutional right and the constitutional right of Dr. Mo. Um, you know, we didn't want to resist. They didn't explain why they didn't want me in there, but fortunately, a small group, including my colleague here, were allowed to go in. Uh, obviously, they were able to see uh, Dr. Moore. So, in a way, we've achieved our mission, despite their desire to create trouble. We're not here for trouble. The is Mr. Trouble himself. We don't want to be like him, but there's no reason why we should be denied our constitutional right to see, to visit someone who is prison, because that is what human rights allow for. But obviously, we don't understand why it's different. <coughs> Do you think maybe there should be a specific reason why they are trying to avoid you from seeing I think they are afraid of their own shadows, and very soon they will be running all over, because you see, you, the shadow follows you. So wherever they are, they are afraid of something. And we can only define it their own shadow. You know, through that uh, rob our country of resources. I think they are afraid of the impeachment motion, which initially they were saying going to table it on the floor of the house, despite that we met the procedural requirement, which is a three day notice. The Deputy Speaker herself confirmed that our motion is constitutionally constructed correctly, is procedurally correct. Why are they not tabling it? It's the first time they refused to table a motion which meets the minimum requirements. Why? They are afraid because they know that uh, the offenses they've made to the people of Zambia, the occasion of Zambia, there are many people, including members of the parliament from their own party, who would vote with us. Not because they've been bought, they've been paid hidden, because they're doing what is their constitutional responsibility, to, to act on behalf of the 17 million Zambians. We believe, we can only speculate, these are the issues, these are the reasons. But you know, as I said, the shadow follows you. So they will run, they will not hide. They will run, they will not hide. Okay, what Luckily, you, yes. What would be your, your, your words? You know, they are saying that uh, the motion, you know, it's, they are telling, telling, telling it to follow us. But the speaker has already ruled on that. That the motion is constitutional, is procedurally correct. So who else should comment about it? But if it's flavorous, bring it on the table, bring it on the floor of the house. They should have brought it on Wednesday, they didn't. They should have brought it yesterday, they didn't. If it's flavorous, why are they afraid of getting implicated? Because they know that citizens will know the constitutional transgressions that have been occasioned, not one, although the constitution allows us to impeach somebody in that office of the president on one transgression, but here we have more than 10 transgressions. They are afraid that citizens will now see that they have a, an officer in public office who is breaching the constitution. They are also afraid that they will lose the vote. As you know, it's not a question of having the UPND MPs on. This motion has been signed off by UPND MPs, mm. independent MPs, PF MPs, and more are going to vote with us as long as there's a secret ballot. They will vote for us because that's what they should do. For the people of Zambia. That's why they're in parliament. Once you're in parliament, it doesn't matter which ticket you represent the people of Zambia. All of the people of Zambia. Two fears they have. They have more fears. They have a third fear is to leave office quickly. They have not stolen enough. They want more time to steal a bit more. But you know, greedy people are never satisfied. Flatterers people are never satisfied. That is the name of thieves. That's the only language, that's the only behavior they know, is to steal and steal more until they're constipated. And you know when you get constipated, you get sick. So they're not yet sick, but soon they'll be sick and they'll be forced out to basically vomit. You know? But let's, I think my colleague would like to comment how our brother is feeling there. That's the most important thing for now. <laughs> All right, colleagues. Uh, what's your question, colleagues? <laughs> How did you find President Mugabe? Well, I found him uh, to be in very, very high spirits. And uh, I think uh, uh, he's okay, all I can say. He's fine, he's fine.
but I think what needs to be commented about is just in the way he was convicted. I think we will not stop talking about it as not only a party UPND, but I think uh, as a people of Zambia. I think it's so unfortunate. Mm. And uh, I don't even know where the, the presiding judge got the guts to sentence a man who had been a vice president of this great country, Zambia. You understand? Yet the charge was in fact fineable. 1,000 kwacha. Why did he find it if he was found with a case? But I doubt it. And uh, you see, I don't want to comment so much on his judgment. I think this is a judgment that needs to be looked at by Zimbabwean people. Because I don't think his judgment was clearly based on what the, uh, or on the statements that he got from Nevers Mumbi. So I don't want to comment so much on that, but what I want to tell you is what exactly the President has said. Our colleagues in PM, I think they are sitting on a landmine. They don't really know what they are doing. And usually when you see a government behaving in the manner it's behaving, then you know that the government is about to exit. This is exactly what happened when I was in PF. This is exactly what MMD, uh, MMD uh, government did to us. If you remember those days when Sata, myself and other uh, officials of PF, we were almost tear gas everywhere. Even at DC, we were tear gas. That was the la those were the last things of the diet. So for me, PF, I think people of Zambia are about to show that they are exit. That's why they are behaving in this manner. But I think uh, to cut the story short, Dr. Mumba, uh, the people of uh, Zambia, Dr. Mumba is in very high spirits. And uh, we know that I think come Tuesday, he has appealed to the higher court, which is the uh, high court, which should be out on Tuesday. So we just wish him all the best between today and the Tuesday. May God bless you all, and uh, please, Zambians, enjoy this holy week. Thank you. But just to add on what my colleague has said, the behavior of the failing government. Yes. You know, it was outside there, in the rain, for hours, when there's a waiting room inside. So they're afraid even just to put us on chairs. I don't know what they think the chairs will do or say to us. That's a fear, I think, is coming. Where does that go to the national dialogue? Well, <laughs> that's the more reason that dialogue is essential, it's necessary. Because we civilize people to solve our problems in talking, not through the jungle law. We have believed the use of jungle law is the solution. So at some point, even countries that are at war with each other, they speak and talk how to end the war. We're not at war. We're in competition. But PF does not understand the meaning of competition. Thank you very much. Thank you. They need, they need dialogue more. Yes, exactly. exactly. Thank you.